What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I'm going to take a look at the two octave C major scale today, and eventually take a look at every single two octave major scale. So let's dive right in and look at some fingering options for this scale. I have kind of bizarre advice about two octave major scales, which is wait on those probably a little longer than you think. I'm a big fan of digging into one octave scales and really understanding those patterns on the bass. I think that people get ambitious and they want to get around the instrument, but there are just so many shifts that we have to deal with on this instrument and our intonation foundation might not be super solid when we're starting out. It probably isn't if you're like me when I was starting out at least. So I think it's a good idea to wait, but if you're watching this video, you want to dive in, I'm sure, to these two octave major scales. And I've got a few different ways that I want to tackle this scale and all of the major scales and maybe a bunch of other scales. We'll see what I end up doing with this series. So I'm going to lay out two options for this scale and two options for every scale and then just give you one arpeggio fingering. I think that is plenty. So option one is what I think of as the simplest possible option. It's going to use the most open strings, it's going to stay down here longer than the other scale option, and it's the one that I usually show people when they're digging into two octave scales. Option two is going to be a little bit more challenging for most people, but it's also probably going to be a little bit more useful for learning all the other scales, because what I'm doing is taking a template fingering. And I learned about this system from my teacher back at Northwestern University, Michael Hovnanian, former Chicago symphony bassist. I remember my first month of college at Northwestern with Michael and this is one of the first things we dug into and it's what I call a 2-2-2-3-3-3 two, 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 three, three, three template and let me explain. The idea with this template fingering is you play two notes and then you either go to a new position or you go to a new string. So you play two notes, two notes, two notes. Then you play three notes together and that starts to get a little more advanced because you need to either think of them as a group that you pivot between or shift just slightly between. It really depends on how you like to approach the bass. I find this pattern really helpful though because it eliminates the number of shifts in any given passage. And then I give you an arpeggio fingering and arpeggio fingerings are tough. I have a hard time finding one that I like, that I like to recommend when I'm working with somebody. Take it for what it's worth. It's the one that seems to give me the least grief for each of these scales. Some of them get a little bit on the complicated side. And again, two octave scales are a little bit more complicated in general, but if you're watching this video, you're anxious to dig into these, I'm sure. So timestamps for everything are in the description below. You can hop between me actually playing the scales and teaching the scale and all the concepts to think about. So I really hope you enjoy this video and let's dive in. Okay, option one for C major. We start on the C right here. And if you get that note really in tune, you hear that glowing tone, that glowing tone, that's a G. And if you can get that sound, my friend, you are off to a good start with the C major scale. If you do not get that sound, if you get something like this, that is what I call a sad sound. And it's, it's likely that you're just not firmly down. And that's sort of a dangerous word, but I'm going to use it. You're not firmly enough down. Uh, I think about engaging one and two, and my thumb is opposite my second finger for that. So that just start seems silly to talk so long about the first note, but get the first note and you will be in much better shape. So then we just stay in first position here. C, D, E, F. And notice, as I'm playing these notes, three and four are hovering over the string. So I've got one down, two down, and three, four are just kind of chilling out right there. Then I move over to the G string and everything moves over. So I'm always trying to prepare before I get to the new position or before I get to the new string. This is so important. So if you watch me closely when I play, you'll see that my fingers, or they should be doing this anyway, hopefully I am, you'll see that my fingers are moving up and preparing before the next note. So that's what we do for our first position notes. Now we're shifting from B up to C. So B, C. And what happens in my hand? 
I think, <laughs> is I have my fourth finger down right here and I sort of collide with the other fingers and then one takes over. So I'm on B with four, now all of a sudden I'm on B with three, two, one, and I shift like this. <laughs> By the way, the same thing is true when you're going down. I'm on one and I kind of knock everybody out of the way. A great exercise is just to take B and practice. Going back and forth on the same note. It sounds pretty bizarre when you're walking by someone practicing that way, but that's a really good way to practice. Another exercise that I've stolen from, I don't even remember who along the way, is to put an intermediate step in. So you're playing four, now play one, and then make the shift. So four, one, make the shift. And that's a great way to get used to maintaining that connection. Now that we've gotten to C, we're gonna put two notes in the next couple positions. So we have C, D, and we have E, F, and I like to play one, four, two, four. And I'm using the exact same concept in these positions. So if I'm on one, and then I play four, I'm kind of bumping the other fingers out of the way and then shifting. And you can do intermediate steps again. And then the same thing back down. That's a great way to practice those, those shifts. Using a drone is really helpful for this kind of practice, especially when you're getting going, but I practice with a drone every single day. I like to drone on the fifth. So I'll have my tuner on the note G as I'm practicing, and that means there aren't any half-step conflicts, and it's just a useful pitch to practice getting your intonation down. Now we finally get to thumb position. So we're on, again, from this C, C, D, E, F, now we put our thumb on G. And there's a lot of debate about where to land with the thumb. I like to land in one of two places. I'm either right kind of on the bone of my thumb right here. If you were playing slap bass, it's kind of that part of the thumb. Or it's a little more challenging, but there's some benefits. I like to also try to land right by the edge of my fingernail. And it's generally easier to start on the knuckle, but you might want to work toward developing a callus right here as well. So we put that thumb on the G. Next note we have is A. And there are a few concepts to think about as you're getting up here. I like to think like there's a tennis ball in my hand right there, and that tends to help in terms of developing the right kind of hand shape. A lot of people kind of flatten their knuckles out here and that can cause all sorts of problems down the line. So I like to think about having a nice curved arch all the way around. And so I put down thumb, then I put one on A. And from my perspective, there's like a nice round, almost golf ball shape right there. Then I play two on B. And then three. So that's how it looks. And my pinky is just kind of hanging out here. I don't do anything special with it. It's just kind of with the hand. So that position is fairly curved here, fairly curved here, and a little bit straighter with the third finger. And then we just turn it around, go back down for option one. So we play three, two, one, thumb, back down, four, two, shifting, maintaining connection. And you can hear that glowing tone when I finish, just like when I started. Option two is this template fingering idea, and the concept is playing two notes, playing two notes, playing two notes, 
and then playing three notes. And this is where things get a little bit fuzzy because if we were playing electric bass, we could just put one, two, four down on the frets and it wouldn't really be that big a deal. It's not really, uh, it's an open hand position on the electric, but it's not like you're having to stretch out or do anything weird. We, we can only open our hands so wide. So when you get to this B, C, D right here, I let my hand pivot slightly. You can see what that looks like right there. So I play. It's also totally possible to shift. Like you're moving your second finger and your thumb as a unit together right there. Practice it either way. The important thing in my mind is that I'm thinking of those three notes as a group. So again, I've got two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes. Now things get a little more complicated because I want to play the next group of three and I, I have to either decide, do I want to do one, two, four, like this? Or do I want to do thumb, one, three. And welcome to the world of bad choices on the bass. You got to pick one, neither one is great, or just don't do the group of three, but I think it's a great concept to get down. And I was playing around with both of them for this video. I asked a few of my students, I had them play. Some of them preferred the one, two, four. Uh, I personally like the thumb, one, three. The challenge with doing four is that you're having to go from this side of your hand all the way over to this side of your hand for four to one. I find that to be a little bit of an awkward motion. I find that I'm a little more secure with my intonation if I put my thumb on E here. And then that tends to be a little more of a similar feel in my hand. Of course, this E down here with the thumb, it's what we call low thumb position. And it's a little more of an intermediate concept, but I think it's a great thing to start diving in because you will find if you move the thumb like this, you're going to have all sorts of options for expanding the number of notes you can have in a position. So the fingering will look like this. One, four, one, two, one, four, one, two, four, thumb, one, three, and then one, two, three. Now, a few things to keep in mind or consider. Do you want to play this G as a harmonic? Do you want to play it close? It's up to you. I like to do it both ways. The great thing about the harmonic is it's going to be in tune if your bass is in tune. The nice thing about working with three closed is that since it's a template fingering, we're going to move it around the bass and we're just getting good practice closing that note. I say use what you got when you're working on intonation. We have so many challenges on this thing <laughs> anyway. So I use harmonics all the time, but I think there's benefit to practicing it both ways. Bass. So if you're like most people, you're going to find that option one a lot easier at first, but I recommend you dig into option two. You can repeat notes. <laughs> That's always a great way to practice. You can just practice. You can break it up into chunks, just practice a couple of positions at a time. But the sooner you get this template fingering down, the faster you're gonna soar through the rest of these two octave scales. All right, now I've got the arpeggio fingering. And I just am never happy with my arpeggio fingerings. So uh, forewarning before we dig into this. But what I do, at least for this example, is two, one, open. And as I hit the open string, I'm shifting. I'm always trying to get to my new position as soon as possible. So two, one, open, and I shift. One more time, two, one, open, and I shift. Now four goes down two, and you can see three and four are helping each other out and two and one are helping each other out. So that looks like this. Almost like a guitar chord right there. Then thumb, three. That is a great one to practice multiple notes on because you're moving through the position so quickly. 
I practice this every day. I practice one of these types of fingerings and then I start to improvise. And the great thing about the template fingering is it's really easy to put different notes in different spots and still keep the same concept. I could play two notes here, two notes here, two notes here, and then I could play three notes here, three notes here, three notes. I could go up the A string even further and still have the same concept. I could play two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes. Badly out of tune. I need to practice that one next time I practice, but you get the concept. A few physical things to keep in mind as you're practicing these. These are full body experiences, these two octave scales. I mean, the C major scale, it goes from down here on the A string all the way up here on the G string. And I'm standing. I find that this is a little easier if you're sitting on a stool, although that can present its own challenges. For me, I'm standing fairly upright with the bass. The corner of the bass is just right here, kind of tucked into my left hip bone. My feet are flat on the floor. And then when I start to go into thumb position, I just bow into the base, kind of like I'm about to jump forward or go downhill skiing or something like that. And then when I come back up, I just do the same thing. And I'll get into more of that topic in future videos. It's a fairly detailed topic and I want to make sure I do it justice, but just guard against tension. Tension causes all sorts of problems for string players or any musician, really. And it's easy to let it creep into your playing as you're practicing stuff like this. So just look out, be kind to yourself physically, take lots of breaks, drink water, video record yourself, audio record yourself, use a drone, use anything you've got to get yourself in tune and comfortable and getting these memorized in your body. By the way, you can download the PDF for this and all the other major keys in the description below. And unless I just decide to bail on this project, the plan is to film a video for each of the scales, kind of this format where I play, I teach, I goof around, trying to make major scales a little more interesting, hopefully taking a stab at it. The template fingering works particularly well as we get into the more, I call them prickly keys, like D flat major, G flat major, that kind of thing. Just to get started with two octave scales, the C major, the G major, a few of the other friendly keys like that, A major, F major, those all work really well. Jump around as you see fit on these, obviously you do not need to work through them in the circle of fifths or the circle of fourths, although they can be helpful. And that's actually what I do these days is I take a week, play G major, take the next week, play D major, so on and so forth. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've got a beginner bowing video that may interest you if you're getting into scales like this. So I will link up to that here and we'll see you in the next video.